Hello everyone. So in this video, I'll be talking about multiple linear regression, uh, which is an extension of uh, simple linear regression. So the main difference between uh, multiple linear regression and uh, simple linear regression is that for multiple linear regression, you have uh, more uh, than one factor and you try to uh, fit uh, a single model for uh, uh, considering all the variables and try to uh, do either regression modeling, predictive modeling, or optimization. So when it comes to uh, the multiple linear regression, uh, once again uh, we depend on uh, F ratio and uh, uh, which is the variance. Uh, like as I've mentioned before uh, during ANOVA, uh, in the case of uh, multiple linear re regression uh, we use the same uh, f ratio but uh, in the case when we are doing multiple linear regression uh, it is going to be uh, a mean square model by mean square error um, and our hypothesis will be very similar but in this case uh, our hypothesis will be that uh, all the coefficients of the multiple linear regression are equal to zero and uh, if the p-value is uh, less than the significant 0 0.05 then it will be rejected and we'll accept the alternate hypothesis. So let me switch over to jump and show you how to do this fitting and do some basic interpretation of the multiple linear regression. So here the data that I have here is uh, 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 thickness uh, uh, of a material that is deposited by a certain process and uh, it is mainly dependent on the concentration of uh, two reactants and also the uh, time for the reaction to occur. So let's try to see how uh, thickness is dependent on uh, these three variables. So to do the multiple linear regression, you go to analyze menu and open fit model. And here you choose uh, thickness as the Y variable and choose all the three uh, variables as your construct model FX and click add. So right now I'm considering each of these variables individually. Later on, uh, we might have to transform these variables by multiplying them or squaring them and various other combinations uh, which we'll talk about I'll talk about in an other video additionally personality by default uses uh, method of least squares but there are other options available again I'll be speaking about this at a later stage and emphasis is again uh, effect leverage at the moment uh, we'll explore some of the other two later on once you choose these uh, you can click run so now you can see that jump has done the uh, uh, multiple linear regression fitting uh, and so here you can see on the left it's individually fit uh, these three variables and this is a whole model uh, fit considering all the three variables so here in this case the two of the most important uh, tables are the fx summary uh, and uh, or and the summary of fit FX summary and ANOVA table are more or less the same. They convey the same information. Uh, so ANOVA table, if you look at it, uh, it gives you the F ratio, which is the mean square model by mean square error. So higher the value, this means uh, more uh, the model explains the variation that we are seeing. So here you can see that F ratio is 123.55. And also you can see that the P value is uh, significantly lower. So this means uh, the model uh, does a good fit and then uh, uh, as I mentioned before uh, so the FX summary is kind of like a graphical interpretation of the F values for each of these uh, variables and if you look at uh, summary of fit as I have uh, talked about in the simple linear regression video the R square value R square adjusted and RMSC value are very important so higher the value of R square that means uh, more it explains the uh, more is the explanation uh, given by the model that we are fitting. So uh, this value basically is obtained by uh, uh, dividing the uh, the sum of squares that is the uh, model sum of squares by the total sum of squares that is 180.69520 by 227.5024. So that's how you get this value. Uh, I'll later on talk about how R square adjusted is obtained. Uh, and additionally if you come to this parameter estimates table so one thing that uh, as I've mentioned earlier in this video if you are interested in uh, trying to understand which variable has an impact on the overall response uh, variable uh, 
you can kind of see that individually it get this uh, the MLR process gives uh, estimate for the parameters and it also gives p-values and from this p-values you can kind of say which uh, variables are uh, very significant so from this uh, you can kind of tell that uh, the reactant 1 and reactant 2 concentration are uh, very significant on the other hand time uh, has a value greater than 0 0.05 so uh, you can say that uh, time uh, does not significantly impact the uh, the response variable so there are quite a lot of other things that can be done uh, which I will talk about in the upcoming videos. Another thing that you may want to see is the residuals uh, by predicted plot. Here you can see that the values are randomly distributed around zero and there is no uh, pattern as such. So uh, this kind of tells that uh, the model is uh, doing a good job of fitting your uh, response variable. Thank you.